Piper Hallowell is often portrayed as the sister who longs for normalcy the most. From the beginning of the series, she is the one most opposed to the supernatural world, and, by extension, the sisters' powers and their destinies as the charmed ones. While it's easy to dismiss this as Piper panicking over the reveal of the supernatural, this longing for normalcy is actually a symptom of a bigger desire, a desire she carries for the majority of the series. What Piper Hallowell desires above all else is stability. She longs for a stable, uninterrupted life, one in which the people she loves remain by her side and where she can feel some semblance of control. She doesn't necessarily want to be normal, she just does not want things to change. And if we examine her journey throughout the series, we can see how this resistance to change shapes much of her characterization. Everything is different. We're witches now. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. When the series starts, Piper is already in the middle of two major upheavals in her life. The death of the girl's grandmother six months prior and the return of Phoebe from New York. While Phoebe's return is a good thing in Piper's books, as it reunites the sisters and provides a sense of family and security, we quickly see how Piper is often forced into the peacemaker role between her two fiery sisters, with her wants and needs overlooked in favor of maintaining peace. However, she is shown to be close to both her sisters in different ways, which helps her navigate their rocky relationship. The revelation of their powers gives us the first glimpse into Piper's longing for stability and, by extension, normalcy as she laments their new destiny as witches. I just want to be normal again, as messed up as that was. Is that too much to ask for? Piper has a deeply caring nature, and we see her worried that her new powers will have a negative effect on who she is. Of the three sisters, she is the one who struggles most with their magic, and it's very telling that her power is initially linked to her anxiety, activating whenever she panics. Over the course of the first season, Piper struggles with coming to terms with the Charmed One's destinies, and we see her continually rebel against their fate. Becoming a witch opens her up to a world for which she is not quite ready, and she is the only sister whose powers don't progress during the first season. While Prue and Phoebe both grow and change over the first season, Piper mostly stays in her own lane, not ready to step outside her comfort zone in matters supernatural and natural. She has to be pushed by Phoebe to strike up a romance with handyman Leo, and the revelation that he is a mystical white lighter who has been sent to watch over them is yet another upheaval in her life. Despite falling hard for Leo and forming a deep connection with him, Piper enters season two unsure of where their relationship will go. Seasons two and three show Piper trying her hardest to maintain some semblance of control and stability over her life. At the start of season two, she quits her job at Quake and strikes out on her own, opening up the nightclub P3 with her sisters as investors. After an initial rough start, Piper finds financial security with the club and it becomes a constant in her life, as she expertly takes up management and turns it into one of the most popular clubs in the area. Her work ethic and emerging business sense help her to gain confidence and the club itself becomes a symbol to her, a sign of stability and consistency. She often goes there when upset, such as when she runs out on her wedding in season three, or when she breaks down over Phoebe's turn down the dark side in season four. And it is telling that when Piper begins to fully accept Paige in season four, it's linked to the revival of P3. Looks like P3's back. Over the course of season two, Piper finds herself increasingly frustrated with her romantic life, and a big component in this is the desire for stability. While she initially tries to maintain a relationship with Leo, she finds herself struggling with the lack of consistency. Leo being a white lighter proves difficult for Piper, as he is constantly called away to other charges and is forbidden from sharing intimate details of his life with her. When she and Leo discover hidden love letters between the girl's mother Patty and her white lighter Sam, Piper finds herself deeply identifying with Patty's fears and worries. It's like I could have written these. I wish you had. What would it have changed? The letters drive home the reality that if she commits to a relationship with Leo, it comes with an air of uncertainty that she is not ready for, and this explains why she breaks up with Leo despite still loving him. 
It also explains part of her attraction to her neighbor Dan and why she commits to a relationship with a man she doesn't have deep feelings for. While it is clear that Piper does feel some genuine attraction to Dan, it is also clear from the very beginning that Dan is more into the relationship than Piper. While Piper cares for Dan, it becomes increasingly obvious that he isn't her true love and that her attachment to him stems at least partially from her desire for stability and ease. Piper allows her longing for stability to rule her heart and, as a result, she becomes increasingly frustrated with her conflicting emotions as her love for Leo fights with her desire to have a stable life with Dan. This conflict culminates in the episode How to Make a Quilt Out of Americans in which the girls are stripped of their powers. Piper initially refuses to help her sisters regain their powers as she is fed up with her heart arguing with her desire for stability and ends up blaming being a witch for her romantic problems. Piper still feels that the discovery of their powers was the starting point at which her stable and normal life began to fade away. And this is the first time she tries to walk away from her charmed destiny. Because not wanting to be a witch isn't a symptom of something else like it is for you, Prue. For me, it's the problem. It's the cause. It's the problem with everything. This is not the only time Piper tries to give up her powers, and we see her continually struggle with being a witch as the series progresses, especially as it strips away more and more of her stability. Piper eventually takes a big step forward and ends up choosing Leo over Dan, showing significant personal growth. Finally admitting that she would prefer deep, real love over an idealistic fantasy, she commits to Leo despite the obstacles she will end up having to face. It is one of the first times we see Piper truly open herself up to the unknown, and it is a scary step for her, which is not made any easier by the elders trying to separate her and Leo. After finally choosing Leo, Piper is devastated when he is unceremoniously ripped away from her by the higher powers on the show. After being told to stop seeing each other, Piper and Leo attempt to marry in secret before Leo is literally torn away from her. Piper's devastation in the aftermath sees her once again blaming magic for her problems and refusing to help the innocent of the weak. What does that mean? That means that um, the powers that be haven't done anything but ruin my life, so therefore I'm not going to do anything for them anymore. Okay? I'm going now. Having committed herself to Leo and made the decision to step into the unknown, Piper is scared back to her earlier persona by the tragic consequences of her choice, and she once again tries to walk away from her charmed destiny. It is only once she has acknowledged and accepted that she cannot put her own desires above the need to protect the innocent that Leo is returned to her, as she has finally reached a turning point and has started to recognize that the charmed one's powers serve a bigger purpose and that she must sometimes sacrifice things in servitude of that. Luckily for Piper, she learns this lesson and is rewarded for it, reuniting with Leo and eventually making it down the aisle towards the end of season three. Season three provides the biggest and most traumatic upheaval in Piper's life when Prue dies in the finale, leaving Piper feeling abandoned and completely alone. Much of Piper's subsequent characterization over season four stems from the trauma she undergoes when she loses her big sister. Not only does Piper feel completely adrift without Prue, but she struggles greatly with taking over Prue's position as the head of the family. Everything Piper has known is changed when Prue dies, and she struggles much more with the loss than Phoebe does because her personality does not allow for such drastic change. She's been there my whole life. I've always had a big sister, and I don't know how to live without one. While Phoebe also mourns Prue's death, she has a much more adaptable personality than Piper and as such, does not feel the same sense of abandonment. These feelings of abandonment cause Piper to develop a great rage towards Prue, which manifests itself in the episode Hell Hath No Fury as Piper is transformed into a monster and almost loses her humanity. Only once she expresses her anger at Prue does Piper transition back into a human, and it is easy to see how lost she is without her older sister there to guide her. Season 4 continues to explore Piper's grief over Prue's death and her struggle to regain her sense of security and stability. A particularly pivotal episode in this arc is Brain Drain, in which the source kidnaps Piper and creates an alternate world within her mind, one in which she is not a witch, but a delusional patient in a psych ward. As the delusion becomes more real to her, Piper's grief and guilt over Prue's death resurfaces, and she is almost manipulated into giving up the powers of the Charmed Ones. Once again, 
We see Piper blame magic for the instability in her life and try to abandon it despite the good it has done. She is rescued from this illusion by the love of her sisters, which shows how, despite her grief still running deep, she is starting to heal from it and moving forward with her life. While Piper continues to grieve Prue over the series, she also grows in strength and resolve, thanks in large part to Paige helping to heal the wound left by Prue's death. We see how much Piper has grown when she discovers that all the demon fighting the girls have taken on has caused physical damage to her body, meaning that she may encounter difficulty conceiving. Rather than immediately trying to walk out on her magical destiny, Piper takes the news in stride, and when the girls are given the chance to give up their powers at the end of the season, she quietly accepts her sister's decision to remain witches despite the hardships it has inflicted upon her. But Phoebe's right. This isn't a choice we have to make, it's who we are. Rather than kick and scream against her destiny, Piper has learned to adapt, knowing that she cannot control everything and that sometimes she has to accept the instability in her life. She enters season five much more content than any other season, newly pregnant and ready to tackle motherhood, but everything is not smooth sailing and Piper faces new challenges over the season. As with both Prue and Phoebe, Piper has abandonment issues surrounding her mother's death. These issues manifest themselves early in season five as the girls are forced to face a demon identical to the one which killed Patty. Piper's world was rocked by the absence of her mother and she fears her child growing up in the same state of instability if anything were to happen to her. This fear is so paralyzing that she casts a spell to rid herself of it, accidentally removing so much that she ends up behaving in extremely reckless ways resulting in her almost drowning. It is only after she confronts the fear of her baby growing up without her that Piper is able to conquer her fear without supernatural assist and look forward to her baby's arrival. I know why you've been afraid. You don't want to leave your baby the way I left you. But spells won't make that fear go away. Only faith will. Have faith that your destiny is different than mine. Unfortunately for Piper, the end of the season sees one of her biggest losses on the show and is the catalyst that makes her finally abandon any notion of attaining a normal or stable life. When the powerful titans are released from their sleep, they slaughter the elders and the girls take on the powers of the gods in order to defeat them. In a surprising turn of events, Leo becomes an elder, effectively removing him from Piper's life and leaving her a single parent to their son Wyatt. Piper's heartbreak over the decimation of her family is so great that she loses herself to her Earth Goddess powers and almost destroys San Francisco. For five seasons, she has sought to maintain some semblance of control over her life and has desperately longed for stability, and having it ripped away from her just as she manages to achieve it is more than she can bear. Piper's pain is so destructive that Leo offers to remove it for her, but this proves disastrous as Piper becomes manic in the aftermath showing how pain is essential to the healing process. In the final few seasons of the show, Piper finally sheds her desperation for stability and normalcy and becomes surprisingly adaptable. While Piper's exterior hardens in the later seasons and she develops a more pragmatic personality, she is still shown to be caring and compassionate, maintaining her snark and core personality traits while she grows into a stronger and more adaptable person. Because we see her change so much and learn to accept so much uncertainty, it is immensely satisfying to see in the epilogue of the series that she does finally manage to achieve a sense of security and stability. Through learning to live with the unpredictability in her life, Piper gains the security she has always wanted with a rich and secure life in which she finally finds peace, stability and happiness. <laughs>